Why, hello, I'm Doseku, and welcome back to you, or welcome to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza. Let's start this game, shall we? So we did options first, so we're just gonna go to start game. Oh yeah. You want a new game? And we get to look at our overworld. Sweet, right? This is actually based in the, um, was it? Open bore engine, which is usually used to make, well, side scrolling beat em ups, but they actually managed to jigger it enough to actually give it a top view, was it top down view overworld to go with, and a bunch of uh, characters we would select from with its own customized character screen. So, since we're gonna hit the ship, let's start off. So, for at the moment, we only have the Ninja Turtles to work with, which is fine. And we're gonna go with Leo, as you already see here. Now, one of the cool things about this game that you don't see in very many other Ninja Turtle fan games is... Well, you can actually select more than just the Turtles themselves to play as. And of course, we're fighting on the sub that's from, was it, the Manhattan Project. And that's actually another neat thing this game does. It actually uh, combines, was it, Ninja Turtles 1, 2, and 3 from the Nintendo. People usually tend to forget about their first Ninja Turtles game for some weird reason, because it's not really a side scrolling beat em up. And of course, we got our Foot Soldiers and Little Flying Vehicles, which introduces another neat feature that this game has, as soon as we get to it. <laughs> and yes, that is right. We get to ride vehicles too now. Nice. Unfortunately, it didn't help us here because you can't actually hit the other guy with the vehicle. And we're gonna be here for a little bit, so... I'm probably gonna mention something right here. You've probably already heard like a little sound, sounds like someone's pressing a button every time we hit an object. Or when we're not hitting objects or whatever. And that isn't me. When I actually look at a video while... Uh, another video of this game before I decided I wanted to do it. I assumed the guy had the mic active for some reason. Even though he wasn't saying anything into it. And apparently it's an actual sound effect that's in game whenever you attack. That makes it sound like you're pressing a button on a gamepad or something. And I think it's a little annoying later on as you hear it more and more as we progress. Oh well. It looks like we're nearing the end of the sub, but we get... Ooh, more flying vehicles. Now there was another game I wanted to look at that was actually completed. But... Um... Well, the fact is, its files were on 4Shared, and every time I tried to get to them, it wouldn't let me download them. And I really, really hate sites that have multiple fake download buttons all over the freaking place. Hoping you'd find just the right one that lets you download the file you want. It would've been cool too because I had like Battletoads in there somewhere. Yeah, but whatever. If he isn't going to fix it, I'm not going to bother looking for it. Now, another thing you may have noticed is... That yes, we do get voice clips in this game. Now I can't remember if that's the one from the 80s cartoon or not that you're actually hearing. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, so here we have a uh, dirtbag and ground check. I was trying to see if they'd say anything else besides what they said when they entered. But they're actually based off the, uh, well, actually they both showed up in the, the Manhattan Project. And then they both have been, um, added to this game and redone in Glory 16-bit. Yeah. I think they can't beat these guys. Oh my god. So. Here I am using my standard procedure of, well, just damage racing them, I suppose. Hit him up and 
fail to avoid a lot of their attacks. It looks like we've got Dirtbag down at least. And of course I missed the blasted uh, super we had. There we go. I wonder. Hey, can we do this? You've been horn swuggled indeed, my friend. Oh, hey! And after we beat each level, we get new characters. This time we get Mona Lisa, Gronchek, and Dirtbag. Huh. Alright, so, unfortunately, this is a demo. So, we don't have very many levels to select from right now. However, we do get a couple more though, at least, right? And that's going to be the park, or the rooftop. For this one, we're going to go with the park, though. And we're going to try out our new character. I also like how they actually, um, proceed each of the levels with the, uh, title card that you'd see from the regular show. Now here's Mona Lisa. Now, at first I assumed she was the, um, character from the live action of Ninja Turtles show way back when but I think that was Venus de Milo which is a different character entirely I don't actually know where I would have seen Mona Lisa from or which episode of the uh, 80s turtles that she popped in with Now this is just a recreation of the snowy central park from, well, Ninja Turtles 2. But I think it's probably the exact same level, they just redid it over to this game. So it looks good, I do like how there's a, well, yeah there is a lot of effort in this game to combine the first three games. It does pretty well, too. And yeah, I don't know what she's using. At first I thought it was a ball of yarn she was attacking people with, but I think it's actually an, an attack yo-yo. Yeah, I can kind of hear it more clearly now that that sound that makes it sound like someone's hitting a button. And of course, yeah, these guys were also in the uh, original Ninja Turtles too. I don't know what they were actually called, but yeah, they do come in as snowman. They shoot missiles at you until you break them out of the snowman form, and then they just jump at you. Oh yeah, and look at that. There's also ads for pizza, which were all over the second game. Even it was in April's building in the beginning. Now this level isn't too hard, and the boss for this level isn't too hard to reflect that. I just don't know where we're at right now. There we are, we're at the boss. Perfect. So this is Tora, and that spinning thing back there you can't actually attack, that's what's creating the weather for this area. Otherwise it wouldn't be a snowy day in Central Park. That Tora is easy, all he does is he throws ice boulders around, that's it. So it's very easy to get up to him and just slice at him. He can't even attack you when you're right next to him, so there you go. And let's see if we can pull off a special here. There we go. Yeah, I do like how her uh, special is a bit long range, so... Even if he's a little bit away from you, you can still activate and still hit him with it, even if it's at the end of the attack range. Oh look, he actually does have a punch. Huh. He's still by far the easiest boss so far, though. Down he goes. Alright, so who do we unlock? We unlocked, ooh, 
April O'Neil, and we also unlocked Tora. Alright, let's get out of here. Alright, so there's basically one level left. That'd be the rooftop. Now, I know we can play as Ground Check, Dirtbag, or Toro, but not very many games let you play as April O'Neil. So, let's pick her up and see how this rolls. Rooftop run. Alright. Alright, so April gets two things. She gets the uh, whip, which is her microphone, which you saw right there. And she gets a screen clearing attack, which is just her camera. And of course I died. Why not? Alright, so this level is based off the one from the original Ninja Turtles. In fact, it was the um, end of the uh, first level. Or, sorry, it was near the boss fight, honestly. We had to run across a bunch of rooftops to save Splinter. Now it's best not to ask how we're playing as April when she was captured in the uh, title screen. Just let it be. Perhaps we'll get a uh, time paradox and actually rescue her as her. You never know. Unfortunately, there's no more enemies in this level from... Uh, from the first Ninja Turtles game, it's just basically the uh, balloons that drop bombs on you and whatever the heck those things were called. I do like how the balloons actually have the Foot Ninja logo on them though. That's actually pretty funny, it's like they branded everything. That goodness, I think, didn't knock me into the... Um, platform that would have dumped me to the pit. <laughs> that would have been bad. But even though her power was one on the uh, character slot, she seems to be quite powerful. Due to the fact that she... Well, she's a long range attacker, honestly. So for him here, the Mecha Turtle, we don't actually have to get this close. We can get outside his attack range and strike him that way where he couldn't even hit us while well, we still can. But for this run, we're just going to damage race him. I think we can take him out before he takes us out. Yeah, it looks like we almost have him. One, two, a little more. And boop. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is actually a two-phase fight, which you get one life to take him out in, or at least we have one life to take him out in. That's gonna be bad. Now, unfortunately, here I think I can still damage race him, which is not a smart idea. In fact, you can't actually hit him that much. You probably get like one or two hits while he's flying and then maximum of one or two hits while he's on the ground before he comes back into the sky again after he shoots that missile. But you've basically seen all the attacks he has though. Ugh. So we kind of game overed. So let's try this again, this time with three lives. I'm wondering why the heck the foot soldier has, has a billboard with their logo on it and sit in front of a building. But whatever. Yeah, this is the more erratic version of uh, Mecha Turtle the first. But we're still damage racing him to death and he's a lot easier this time around now that we know what we're doing. Alright, so now it's up to phase two. 
Now that bottom missile is actually kind of easy to avoid, you can see it right there. That's all you have to do, and you can get one or two hits in each time. Now also, don't forget to use your uh, camera when you get the chance, because that will also do some damage. Like that. It's best not to ask how a camera does it, it just does. I guess the one complaint I have about this game would be how the music it reloops itself. It makes it quite obvious that the game loops the music. I think the original Nintendo's didn't actually do that. You can actually um you couldn't really tell where the music looped in the original Nintendo ones. Well this one it just makes it quite obvious because music just cuts off for a couple seconds and goes back on again. But of course after that boss fight we got this. A uh, mini platforming section with floating platforms and things that fire on you. Thankfully no foot soldiers or, any or anything like that. And of course these guys make a return. But now they're in tandem with other ones that do the same thing. It's just a matter of timing. Oh, uh, you wanna- oh. Uh. You basically wanna get their- when the first one jumps up, wait for the second one to drop, then jump onto the second one. Like you see here. That bad. Now hopefully this gets us to the end of the level. I don't know if I can take another boss fight. Oh, oh it is. And with different music too. So, welcome to Slash. This guy is kinda hard. And it's... Well, how do I put this? He's hard due to what you see there, honestly. If you're attacking him from the left side of the screen like we are now, you're in for a lot of pain because... You have to avoid his spinning attack that he does and... If you do it... Well, if he hits the screen, or the edge of the screen, he comes right back around, right? So if you're at the edge of the screen and you jump, you don't have enough time to make another jump before it actually hits you. So you're opened up to like two different attacks at once. And you can kind of see how bad that is. So optimally, you want to hit him from the uh, center where you have enough time to jump twice. Like right here. Now he does use his sword attack every now and then. I don't know if we do it here or not. But, he also just stands there and takes a beating for a good while before he decides to attack again. Yeah. And I still can't quite figure out the timing to jump over that too. That kinda sucks. There we go. See? Easy. Once you can figure out, you can dodge this thing and how to dodge it, honestly. And down he goes. But hey, we locked, we unlocked uh, Usagi Ujimbo and we got Mecha Turtle and Slash. However... Wait for it. There you go. It's the actual end of the demo. So, I hope you guys enjoyed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza. It's a fun little game and I'll be looking at it again when either the next demo comes out or when the full game comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next game.